I don't know why, but I started looking up stuff about the color blue. And one of the things, you know, I, I um, when I'm on book tour, every every place you go, you basically you you get up in the morning, you fly to a new place, you have a rental friend who picks you up and drives you to radio stations and TV and stuff like that, and you talk and you know annoy people evidently and um, by mispronouncing French stuff, and then. Um, and usually it's not TV, usually it's just radio, because novelists don't really get on TV unless it's, um, or they, we just really don't get on TV. <laughs> uh, you can get on, like, How You Do in Minneapolis at, like, 5.30 in the morning, you know, after the, the turtle woman from the zoo and before the poison control guy that, you know, tells you, you know, don't drink that, Drano. Uh, and then and it, and the only people that ever see it are incarcerated. Um, I know this because you, you get home and there's mail that says, Oh, I saw you on How You Do in Minneapolis. You're a very attractive man. Um, and, uh, so... So anyway, you go around the country and you talk about yourself in your book, and you talk about yourself in your book, and, and after a very short time, as you guys probably are already aware, you get incredibly sick of hearing about it, and, and sick of your own voice, and you just want to escape. And you get about, usually about two hours in each town, and the way I've spent my two hours in different towns over the years is going to art museums and looking at painting. And um, the cool thing about American art museums here in D.C. Is, is a classic example of it, but all over the country is that we, because of the Industrial Revolution at the end of the 19th century, had a ton of money. And the French had a lot of painters they didn't like. <laughs> so we have, like, as the best collections of, you know, some of the best collections of Impressionist art outside of Paris. And I think that probably Chicago's collection and, and Washington's collection of Impressionists might parallel Paris. Um, and so I got to look at a lot of, of uh, Impressionist art. It, you know, I, I can tell you for a fact, because I've done it, you can stand in a room in Chicago at the Art Institute. It's the, I think the Chicago Institute of Art, or the Chicago um, Art Institute, but I call it the Chicago Institute of Art because CIA sounds you know, more <laughs> awesome. But you can stand in a room with 16 Monets, and then the next day be in Philadelphia and stand in a room with 16 different Monets. And the effect of that, after you've looked at that art for a couple of hours, is everything shifts. First, it's so not about you. And, and it, your perception of looking at these images that have been filtered through another human consciousness, sometimes, you know, hundreds of years ago, um, it, it changes your perception. You start to see everything as art. The people by the paintings look like compositions. And I thought I was unique in, in, that, in that perception, but I, I, Kandinsky writes about it in uh, On Spirituality and Art. He says that uh, art, when it does what it's supposed to, smooths the coarseness of the soul. Oh, I, what, I thought that was a wonderful phrase that I probably misquoted. And, um, and I was at the, the Chicago uh, Institute of Art in the cafeteria after I'd been looking at painting, and I was in this sort of everything shifted, everything looked like art. And I was watching this lady, she was about 90, and she was eating green beans. And I realized she was in the same space that I was, you know, and every green bean was a piece of art, both in its texture and its flavor and, and its shape. And, and I, I just sort of, I, you know, and I, my, I was like trying to come up with a haiku, you know, because it was, that's my art form. But, but it was just this composition, and I thought, oh, she's there too. And, and so we shagged on the table in the cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, it was like, and don't be disgusted because she had the body of an 85 year old. Uh, uh, that didn't happen. I just don't really have an end for that anecdote. Um,